with Coulomb's law, we can also do vector sorts of problems. Let's say first that I want to find the net force on Q2. Uh, that's the easier problem because then this force is all vertical, this force is all horizontal. So look at that first. Um, remember, forces are vector quantities, so they add vector like. Um, so the force between 1 and 2, force on 2 because of 1, uh, it is a repulsive force, meaning that it will push this downward. Because it is downward, that's a 0, comma, negative k, u1, u2. These are each nanocoulombs, which is times 10 to the minus 9th. So this is times 10 to the minus 18th all over the distance between them squared, 1.2 times 10 to the minus third squared. Then the force on 2 because of 3, you look at that, these are opposite charges, so they attract, which means that there will be a force to the right, which is a positive K, Q1, Q2, times 10 to the minus 18th, oops, 18th, not 8th, over the distance between them, 3.4 times 10 to the minus third squared, comma, zero. Okay. So we can add those together and then uh, do vector stuff to find the magnitude and direction of those forces. Okay. So we've got, in our x direction, we've got k times 2.4 times 4.5 times 10 to the minus 18th over 3.4 times 10 to the minus third squared. And I will store that as x. So in the x direction, we have a point zero zero eight three nine something. And then in the y direction, we have a negative, k, 3.6, whoops, times 2.4 times 10 to the minus 18th over 1.2 times 10 to the minus third squared. Uh, and we'll store that as y. That is a minus so 0 0.05394. And once we have those, we can easily find the magnitude and direction. You know, we do the square root of x squared plus y squared to find the magnitude. 0 0.05459, we'll call it Newtons. In our angle, we take the arc tangent of y over x, and it's at, I'm in radian mode. Try that again. At uh, 81.1 degrees, and let's think about this. This was down, this was to the right. So that is below the plus x axis. Note, that is not east by south. I didn't give you east and south, and so you can't use east and south in the answer. Yep. Okay, so we can do this in two dimensions as well. Now, let's use, we're going to use the same picture here, uh, but we're going to find the net force the net force on uh, Q1. Now that's going to be more difficult because the net force on Q1 from Q2, well these two repel each other so that force is upward, uh, but the Q1 and Q3 attract each other so that force is toward this positive charge so it's going to be kind of down right, direct, directly on the line between them, which means we're going to have to do a little bit of trig to figure out what that angle uh, will be or how to use that that angle right. um, so well we've got the force on one because of two and as I said that is repulsive and it is directly vertical so that's zero comma k times q1 is 3.6 Q2 is 2.4. Those are both uh, nanocoulombs. And then there is a distance between them of 1.2 times 10 to the minus third. Right. 
So it's 0, comma, k times 3.6 times 2.4 times 10 to the minus 18th over 1.2 times 10 to the minus 3rd. Uh, and we actually already did that calculation right over here. Now, <coughs> the force on 1 from 3 is more complicated. Its magnitude is k times 3.6 times 4.5 times 10 to the minus 18 over, now the distance between them squared, well, this is 1.2, this is 3.4, so this is square root of 0.0012 squared plus 0.0034 squared. Uh, so then that squared would just be 0 0.0012 squared plus 0 0.0034 squared. Yeah, so that is the magnitude of the force. But then we have to break that down into components. Now, components can be tricky, but, but we can work this out. Uh, if we've got, we know that this is down to the left. Now we know the horizontal component of this, or we can figure out what these components are just by using trig. Okay. Um, this is our angle from the horizontal. So the horizontal component of that, let's look at this, the sine of theta. Where I need some space here. Make a little box over here. The sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So that's that. The cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? And we can plug those into the components here. Now we know it's to the right, so the x component is positive, and the x component is cosine theta. 0.0034 over square root 0 0.0012 squared plus 0 0.0034 squared comma and then it's below the horizontal so we know the y component is negative and that's negative sine theta so that's 0 0.0012 over square root of 0 0.0012 squared plus 0 0.0034 squared I don't have space to make the triangle bracket but uh, you can pretend that it's there. All right. Um, now I know that's, that's a little hard to read because it's gotten kind of tiny. Uh, so let, let me just say it again. This is 0 0.0034 over square root of 0 0.0012 squared plus 0 0.0034 squared. Actually, we'll just do this. Zoom in. All right. <laughs> and this is 0 0.0012 over 0 0.0012 over root of 0 0.0012 squared plus 0 0.0034 squared. Okay. Now this can be a, a pain to punch into your calculator, um, but, but we can work through it. I recommend using the store function heartily. <laughs> so the y component is just this, or the x component is just this. Uh, so let's work on that first. Now, here's something handy that you can do. Uh, well, let me, when I get there, so you've got a k, We've got a 3.6, we've got a 4.5, we've got a 10 to the minus 18th. And then that's going to be times a 0 0.0034. Now you notice the denominator is the same. Uh, so this is the pow first power, this is a root, which is a half power. So we can combine that and go 0 0.0012 squared oops, plus 0 0.0034 squared and take that to the 1.5 power. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier to punch into your calculator. Uh, that gives us a 0 0.01056, whatever, in the x component. Let's throw that as x. Okay. Then the y component, uh, again, this is a pain to punch in. You might want to, depending on what you're comfortable with with your calculator, you might want to punch this in and store it, then punch this part in and store it, or whatever. Uh, I like to go for it all at once. Uh, we've got a k times 3.6 times 2.4 times 10 to the minus 18th over 1.2 and negative 3 squared. And then we've got that uh, minus 
a, what do we have there, k times 3.6 times 4.5, e negative 18 times 0.0012, oops, times 0.0012 over our 0.0012 squared plus 0.0034 squared to the 1.5. That's quite a lot to punch in, but I think it's easier to do it all at once. Store that as y. And then we can easily find the magnitude and direction. So the force on one is equal to 0 0.0513 newtons, and our angle um, comes out to be 78 point one, et cetera, degrees. Uh, and since they're both positive, that's above the plus x axis.